This is the City of Wapanka City Plan Commission meeting. Uh, welcome everybody to our regular City Planning Commission meeting. It's actually been uh, uh, changed. Uh, we usually hold these on the first uh, Wednesday of the month, but uh, nobody felt like coming in on January 1st. So we are meeting on January 8th. In attendance, we have uh, uh, Commissioners Olson, Fair, uh, uh, Mayor Brian Smith, and then City Staff, of course, uh, Justin Behrens, Aaron, and Andrew Dane. Oh, I'm sorry, and Alan. <laughs> Alan. So we do have two commissioners that are absent tonight. Um, John Kinnear and uh, Tracy Barrent are both uh, unable to be here tonight. And then, of course, we have uh, some guests here tonight that will be introduced as we go through this. <laughs> You have an agenda in front of you. I don't think there were any additions to that agenda, so I think we could just go ahead and approve that. So moved. Second. Motion by Ferris, second by Olson, that we approve the agenda. Uh, discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, motion carried. We got uh, two minutes. Uh, we got the public hearing minutes on December 4th, and then we have the minutes of the regular planning commission on December 4th. Uh, we need to uh, go ahead and approve those and place those on file. Move to approve both of them. <coughs> second. Motion by Keelan, second by Fair, that we approve both those minutes of the December meetings. Discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Uh, motion carried. And then let's just go right into action items. We got uh, resolution number 1446 and just tonight. This is your name all over it, right? Yep, yep. Okay. So this is a resolution uh, to amend the comp plan. Um, Tell them what page that's on, too. The comp, well, the resolution's on page 7 and 8. Uh, a nice aerial graphic is on page 9. And what you're seeing there, uh, what's circled there, is the um, former Habercorn Field site uh, right next to Lakeland Field. <laughs> now, the city of Wapaka is in ownership of both of those parcels. <clears throat> uh, we're going to make that into one big contiguous uh, piece of land. Lakeman Field is going to continue to be Lakeman Field. Habercorn uh, Field will eventually be turned into our future public works facility. Uh, with that future use, that does not fit the comp plan. Um, it is currently, hold on a second, I got my cheat sheet with me. Uh, so Lakeman Field and the former Habercorn Field were uh, in the comp plan as park and recreation, so that definitely fits a baseball diamond and a football field, but not a uh, public works facility. So what we're doing is changing the comp plan to allow the use um, of that facility in the future, coming down the pipeline in the future, going, coming to this group and then also to uh, the city council would be the rezoning, which we would then in the future rezone uh, just the Habercorn field site to the uh, public um, zoning designation. So for tonight, all it is is a passing of this resolution, uh, which is in your packet to uh, amend the comp plan, which is just the first step in the rezone and, and <coughs> future site of Habercorn slash public works facility. Okay, so it's just cleaning up the, the <clears throat> map basically, but Obviously, with the comprehensive plan in there, we want to make sure that it follows our plan, too. So, uh, does anybody have any questions? Is this a recommendation to council, or is, do we approve it at this level? It gets approved at this level. Uh, the rezone goes to council, and then this would be adopted at the same time as the rezone. Is there a reason why... Um uh, the parcel A and parcel B are all going to be this are all are they're all going to be rezoned the same <clears throat> Yes, they're all going to be rezoned to the PUL which is the public uh, Institution that was that recent one we adopted Must have been a year and a half ago <clears throat> um, Well because they're public facilities That was the intent of it. So the first the first facility that was in that zoning is the Wapaka County Highway Garage so this would be the second plus Lakeman Field. So Lakeman Field used as a uh, outdoor recreation facility uh, for public use fits that PUL, uh, and then also our 
future facility for the Public Works Department fits that zoning as well. And, and actually, and Justin, this does come forward to Common Council for approval, so this will have to go through the public hearing process <clears throat> and then come to Common Council for formal approval. Oh, thank you for the correction. Well, okay, so if we look at this resolution, though, and, and again, um, the signature that they're requesting is the chairperson of the City Planning Commission, so there must be something else that goes to Council. Yeah, I believe the... Uh, yeah, yeah, so you're right. So the the resolution gets adopted by plan commission, and then the actual comp plan change will happen through city council. Okay, it'll come as well as the rezone eventually. Okay, so awesome. So we are approving the. Uh, if you're okay with that, we're approving this resolution tonight. Um, I see on here. Uh, at least on the copy I have, I don't know if it was up there, that this calls for, it's a, just a draft. Is that, is there going to be any change to it when we see, uh, when the <coughs> council sees? Well, that is a um, survey of that, of the property that will be finalized um, along with uh, the rezoning. So right now it's just in draft form unless, basically, you know, unless we wanted to make changes now or up until the rezone is adopted. So it'll get finalized uh, pretty much concurrently with the whole rezoning. So we'll uh, call out that meets and bounds description as, or legal description as the rezone property, um, and they'll be finalized basically concurrently at the same time. You don't anticipate any changes? I do not. It, what you see here is pretty much what you should be getting. I'll, mo I'll move to approve re resolution number 1446. Second. Motion by Olson, second by Keelan. We approve uh, resolution 1446. Discussion? Any more discussion? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. All right, next up is uh, the site plan review for uh, Bank First National. And Aaron, are you... Yeah, I can I can give a okay overview of this. Uh, so there is a, a report on page eleven of your packet, um, just to to shortly review kind of what we're looking at here. And Justin, if you want to maybe just go right to one of the site plans, that would be awesome. And I'll kind of talk through some points. So uh, Bank First, <clears throat> we've been back and forth with them. Uh, they've been great to work with, uh, great to communicate with, and on a number of different things. Um, Nothing major. Uh, actually, this is one of those scenarios that was kind of an in-between one as far as could have needed site plan and maybe not. Uh, by the definition, there has to um, be some um, substantial additions to buildings and space, And uh, but this also was substantial changes to the site with the parking and everything else. Uh, so we did feel like it needed to go through a site plan review. Uh, no additions to the building are being proposed and no, and no additional structures are being proposed. Um, all the changes to the building will come in the form of interior renovations. Um, some of the major changes to the site include a rework of the parking lot, um, some parking stalls added, a uh, vacation of a road right of way that kind of <coughs> cuts that parcel uh, in half from north to south um, right now. So we would just be vacating that road right of way and making that one parcel. Um, and that is shown somewhere in your, in your packet. I don't have the page, but I can look that up in a second. 27. Thank you, Justin. Um, lot lines will be moved. Uh, this is a CSM that can be improved, approved in-house. Uh, there is no new lots being proposed, uh, just a combining of current ones and then uh, some lines that will be moved, and we can get into that in more detail as well. Um, from a staff standpoint, you know, Justin and I have talked and Rhonda and, uh, you know, I think the only thing that we discussed at, at length as far as possibly uh, suggested changes was uh, an added bump out that is suggested in the plan. And I know that creates some, some challenges for, for Justin's crews and snow removal, especially in a tight space there. Um, Where are you talking about that, just or Aaron? So that is at their their west or at their northmost driveway. Um, okay. So there isn't one there already. There is not. Okay. So isn't there one uh, the north? 
is there one at the one that's kind of in the center there on Jefferson Street? There is. There that is. That is there, there already. So it's one more down. Okay, gotcha. Right. And the reason you want to do that there? The, re the reason they would want to do that there is just for uh, basically carving out a parking stall and making it a safer spot for people to enter and exit that parking lot. Um, we feel like we can do the same thing with just a painted um, line instead of having a raised curb. Um, and just not having a parking stall there, which is actually what you see on the very north end currently of that driveway. <coughs> okay. Um, That's that, pretty tight there anyways already, so. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that was kind of the, probably the biggest thing. I know, um, Justin, if you want to speak to that anymore, I, d I don't mean to be speaking to public works <laughs> things. You covered it. So. Um, and other than that, I, 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 we really didn't have any concerns. I know Justin looked at stormwater management, didn't seem like there was enough changes for a need of a stormwater plan. Um, and lighting is not gonna be an issue. I mean, we don't really have single family houses around there that lighting will affect or? No, good okay. question, but no. Yeah. Um, uh, well, there was some talk about uh, the last time when we looked at this, they have a, um, kind of a community room, I don't know if I'm referring to that exactly, on the, or would be on the east side. Is that going to, is that going to require any, any either addition or changes to entryways there? Because remember, that's going to be used, could be used uh, uh, hours, uh, uh, different from banking hours, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Do you guys? Uh, yeah, so there would be a change in uh, the entry area. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm Steve Johnson. Uh, the primary entrances to the bank portion as it exists today would remain as they are. Uh, however, the access to our training facility, there would be some doors outside of that. We currently in uh, two of the offices along Union Street on that section have uh, doors into those offices which are not being uh, used as such. Uh, so those will be reconfigured a little bit and not have doors there, but the entryway to the training center uh, yes, there will be a, a door there, and it's in, I believe we have that in one of the elevations uh, in yep. that packet. But it, it won't change the footprint of the building? It does not change the footprint of the building. Okay. It's all <clears throat> interior. Uh, while the, the majority of the renovation will be interior, uh, there will be some fascia changes as well. Uh, just uh, there's uh, in the packet, uh, you can see that there's uh, some sunshade uh, slatting, if right. you will, uh, it actually in that right there, yeah. uh, that would be added. But again, that's not a change of the footprint. That's uh, some cladding that goes between the pillars. All right. Okay. So Aaron and Justin and Andrew, looking at this, then there are no real, uh, any other recommendations? <coughs> On this site plan review, I mean, you guys are okay with what you're seeing is. Yeah. I yes, mean, I don't, I don't fair. see any recommendations that uh, would be different than what you're, what we're seeing here. That is, yes, we agree. Okay. So when we are done discussing this and make a recommendation, is this going to be a final recommendation or is this going to the council as well? Site plan is approved by, Final. yeah, by the commission. <clears throat> okay, so what what about the vacation of the street? I that, think, sorry, Mayor. Go I think I think you have to have a public hearing on that. So yes, yeah, yeah. That's, that'll be done separate. <clears throat> yeah, so the site plan will be approved here. Okay, which will then signal. Okay, let's go ahead and vacate that alleyway that's in their driveway okay. parking yeah. lot. Yeah, uh, and then that would go through. City Council, which would have a public hearing and then adopted through that. And that would be the end of the process as far as you can see? I mean, for which, all, all of their things, it would be in order then? Um, well, we have to make sure that they follow this executive summary because that's what we're approving. Uh, we have the engineering plans or civil plans are, are still being reviewed by our consultant engineers, which uh, we received comments back from them late today which I didn't have enough time to review before sending it back to the bank. So we'll have to go through those. <clears throat> um, but what so far what we've seen is nothing we think would be extraordinary to 
make the wheels fall off. Yeah. Okay. Anything, Steve, you guys want to? Well, we'll they, certainly answer any other questions you may have with regard to the information submitted. I know you've already had a lot of dialogue uh, between uh, Bank First and this group, our individuals who, uh, that are present. <coughs> and uh, we'll certainly answer any other questions you may have about the proposed changes. We do understand that the bump out uh, uh, is of a potential concern. Uh, we realize that when the city originally put the bump outs in on uh, what was then Jefferson Street to uh, develop the library parking area, that uh, that would present uh, the potential of some snow removal, or at least that was the perception of some. Uh, if that is uh, a challenge, as long as we are able to find some way to, and if that's uh, vacating those spots, we will certainly take those back that back to uh, our group. Um, but if lining those spots off in some manner, uh, uh, we do have or have had some challenges. Let me put it that way, uh, with the parking spots right next to that exit, uh, when we have vehicles that are a little longer than the standard uh, automobile, if they're trying to exit uh, and turn right, uh, in particular, uh, because that. Way Jefferson Street has been narrowed with the reconfiguration of the parking there. Okay. Sounds good. So, what you would be doing tonight then is just approving the uh, site plan review for this property uh, so that they, we can get the other things in motion and get this going. Um, so moved uh, for approval. Second. Motion by Fair, second by Olson, that we uh, approve the site plan review for Bank First property. Discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Before we leave this topic, can we just change gears a little and, and ask the question, because we left off with this at the last time we talked about it, in terms of the possibility of a VFW monument? Do we want to fill us in on that? Uh, yeah, I, they're still interested in the, in the location that would be the, the north lot there. Um, and obviously, um, we have had conversation about possibly that being donated to the city once the CSM and everything was approved and finalized. Um, is it your understanding that eventually it'll be city property? Th that is the way we have spoke of it, yes. Okay. So yeah, um, after tonight, I was planning actually to reach out to the VFW contact. But <clears throat> okay. Okay. Anything else? All right, let's move on then. Uh, thanks, you guys, for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, then, we have uh, discussion items, and this has to do with the comprehensive plan and the zoning code update and uh who's the, who's handling this andrew or it's all mr dane okay all right i sent you I still haven't figured out the best way to get like a presentation loaded here but i emailed both of you guys i don't know if you got that <laughs> or if you're able to pull that up just <clears throat> looking at my email now is that the best way just email stuff to you um uh, we can come down here with Josh maybe sometime in the near future and yeah. get this get a good handle. Yeah, maybe he could. Don't you guys have that shared drive sure. that they can get at? I mean, if the file isn't very big, I don't see a problem with yeah. emailing it. But yeah, if it's larger. <laughs> There's got to be. Uh, yeah, so I'll uh, yeah put just put together a little presentation to kind of um, summarize this, so we'll we can work through this. Uh. Everybody see this all right? Or you want the lights down? Turn down those lights. Yeah. yeah. I'm old. I go home and dig a nap. <laughs> Must be nice. Right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, you can just hit the next slide, Justin. So I wanted to just go over the January, what we did on Monday down at the Danes Hall, a little bit of overview um, and some of the results, and then share with you 
Um, we've been working with Walter Jankowski, the strategic planning consultant, myself and Aaron. Um, I'm putting together a survey. Uh, so we have a draft survey we've, we've prepared and we're going to, uh, our intent is to finalize that tomorrow and, and get that um, out there in, in the public. So I wanted to just kind of walk through that survey real quickly with you guys since the meeting was a little short here. And um, so go ahead and hit the next slide, Justin. All right, so, and I've already gone through these slides with you guys, so um, I, I gave folks kind of a little introduction last, or on Monday, of the comp plan and kind of what the, what the scope of the comp plan is. Next slide. Tried to uh, tie in a little bit, make sense of kind of all these plans. I, I feel like it's a little confusing even for people that work in local government or elected officials or planning staff or planning consultants. Sometimes it just gets a little overwhelming with all the different plans that are out there. But And I found this little graphic online that I kind of tweaked a little bit to just illustrate the fact that comp plan really is more of that overarching uh, long-term sort of policy document that then in turn kind of helps inform uh, with these other and sets a tone as these other plans are updated and brought forward and ultimately together with that strategic plan and your budget, um, you know, helps inform annual work plans and, and uh, so uh, next slide. And went over the timeline again with them. Uh, you guys have seen this slide so you can um, skip to the next slide. Um, and then I shared so a few additional uh, little uh, demographic trends I thought I would kind of share with you guys. I shared with you this slide last time and some other slides that I pulled out of here and then added a few more slides um, that I went over on Monday. Next slide. I thought I'd share with you just some information I had gleaned from uh, um, a few housing conference I was at in Green Bay at the end of last or last fall. Actually, a guy, a guy up from Madison, UW Madison, shared some interesting statistics on median household income and wealth levels have, have kind of gone down or stayed the same even since 2007, so even with the rebound. Um, so a lot of communities are, uh, um, you can keep that slide or maybe it's moving along. Two-fifths, I mean, one of the interesting things I thought was two-fifths of U.S. households have less than 25,000 net worth. In particular, a lot of millennials, younger people, really having a hard time meeting credit requirements to take out a mortgage. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot behind some of those trends, but it kind of emphasizes, drives home the fact that housing affordability is is an issue for a lot of folks. Next slide. Andrew, didn't you tell us so uh, either the last time or sub one of these meetings that uh, when you talk about households, how many households have only one person? Yes. Yeah, and the number is actually quite staggering. I thought I forget yeah, the percentage, but it was pretty high. Yeah, it's going up. Yeah, so the average household size is going down, and the number of people living alone or by the or with one other person and or alone. Yeah, it's quite high. Um, and I'll yeah, we'll drill down a little bit more into those numbers when I um, kind of bring forward some of the chapters for you to review. Uh, but uh, yeah, so social isolation or figuring out different support systems, you know, for people that are living alone, I think is important. I shared a few, just to went over a little bit on this concept of the missing middle, uh, which has kind of gotten a lot of traction over the last several years, um, this note. And it basically, the idea is that uh, recognition that since the, um, World War II, uh, we haven't built any missing middle housing products. So prior to World War II in a lot of older neighborhoods and cities, um, you see a lot of duplexes, triplexes, courtyard apartments, bungalows, townhomes, live work, multiplex. And over the last, essentially since post-World War II, we haven't built any of that stuff. We've built a lot of single family and we've built a lot of kind of stack flats or, you know, mid-rise apartment buildings. And now there's a big seems to be a big interest or trend out there in developing uh, some of these other housing products to kind of meet uh, a more different needs and different types of households that are out there now uh, versus um, just the conventional single family. Uh, so this has obviously has implications for zoning and it's, a, I think, a good discussion to have as we move through this process looking at housing. Something to be aware of. Next slide. Um, and then shared with them just some economic trends that I think that Dave Teal had pulled out for us uh, the other day. Um, 
uh, actually 8.5%. This is countywide job uh, loss from 2014 to 2019. A lot of those were in retail, so I'm not sure how many of those are just driven by the um, perhaps a Shopco or the Kmart. Um, uh, top three industries, foundries, eating and dining, education, and hospitals as kind of your top three. Um, eating and dining is particularly interested. Americans are spending more and more money uh, eating out and dining out and taking out and carrying out. And um, that's one of the growth areas for retail or for small businesses and even in smaller communities as um, restaurants. Next slide. Um, and then this was a paper that was published by economists out of UW-Madison and um, UW Extension did this kind of um, little analysis and they found that um, small business startups in rural communities um, are as important or more important in creating new jobs as most larger existing businesses. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not necessarily saying that's the case here with a, a large employer, the foundry, but um, there's uh, most startups in rural areas are not millennials, your younger folks, they're baby boomers in their 50s and 60s. I think you, you kind of see that, or at least I do, as I kind of visit with people. Um, and then a lot of those startups are by educated folks that have a bachelor's degree or some sort of specific skill or, or other um, training that they're bringing to the job. <coughs> might be their you know third or fourth career. They might have already have experience. Um, so you get some um, older kind of operators. Next slide. And then uh, this was just a little, little tidbit on retail. Uh, US, they said the U.S. is significantly oversupplied with retail space with approximately 10,000 store closures in 2019. Another little statistics on there was um, we've got, I think it was eight or 10 times the amount of retail space per capita as like Germany. Um, they pointed out in the study, we're, you know, indicating we still have a lot of, the, a lot of the smaller community malls have been hurt the most. I mean, I've even seen some estimates that say that, you know, over half of the malls that are still existing now aren't going to be around in five years. But the non-specialty retail growth is generally limited to discount stores, um, discount grocers and dollar stores, as you can kind of see in the graph. Um, and then, but probably one of the positive trends might be just, um, um, well, there's some interesting counter trends that are happening. There have been a resurgence in independent bookstores after they got hit pretty hard by Amazon. You guys have a, a bookstore downtown. Um, and specialty kind of niche, niche or niche um, retail in smaller communities like Wapaka um, that find a niche that allows you to expand the, the trade area by attracting more people that are looking for a variety of options within a category. So you find communities like Wapaka competing well as they get into um, things like antiques or um, even um, health and wellness. And, um, you know, I, I think you guys have kind of the nucleus of some of those things here with, um, I know, for example, people, some of my friends, female friends from Appleton drive over here and spend the day and get their hairs cut and do things over in Wapaka. So you've got some of those specialty retailers that can draw from a larger area and uh, compete with Amazon. Next slide. And then these social trends, um, Gallup and Trulia um, do these surveys, and um, that's interesting that they find when they do these surveys is that um, uh, <clears throat> ask people where they want to live and where they want to live um, in five years, and there's um, there's they said they found that 27 percent of Americans would like to live in a rural area, but only 15 percent do, and that ends up being you know 10 or 12 million people. That's a lot of people that don't live in rural areas that want to live in rural areas. And so um, even for rural areas, you know, there's kind of a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel there, or there's a market, there's a capturable market out there for people that do, are looking for that kind of lifestyle but haven't been able to execute it. Um, young millennials' preference um, is to live in more of a big city suburb. Um, and again, that kind of got me thinking, you know, is Wapaka potentially a big city suburb of, of the Fox Cities? Is it close enough to be considered a suburb if you're commuting? Um, and a lot of people, more and more people are part of that contingent workforce that are, you know, um, working remotely or are or, or able to, to work remotely from their jobs, if not every day, um, you know, one, two, three, four days a week. So is there an opportunity there then to perhaps um, uh, uh, position Wapak as an attractive place for folks that maybe are, are working more and more in the uh, different technology sectors or whatever in the in say Fox Cities or Milwaukee or, or elsewhere. Next slide. 
And then we did a couple exercises here. Uh, we did this hopes and concerns exercise to kind of look at, okay, what are, you know, as you look at the future, well, pack at 10, 20 years, what are some key issues and opportunities or what are some key hopes and concerns you have? And um, so we get people kind of sticky dots, some ideas, and then we clustered them up on the wall. Um, Dimitri was there, uh, Mayor was there, Aaron was there. Um, so we had some, a pretty good participation. I did, I'm not, I think we were about 30, 40 folks. So it felt like a decent meeting. Next slide. Got a few uh, few pictures. And it was also nice, I was chatting with the mayor afterwards, it, it felt like it wasn't just the same six people that come to all these meetings. Um, there, it seemed like we got some new faces there, which I thought was, was kind of neat. Um, I think good sign getting. Um, so next slide. These were some of the uh, themes that kind of emerged from that first exercise we did. And I don't think I'm going to read through all these. I'll be summarizing this information as we go through this um, process and kind of distilling a lot of this input along with the input from the survey into some um, kind of key issues and, and draft goals and objectives for you guys. But from a business de development standpoint, um, there were a lot of ideas that were shared. Um, I thought the business incubator idea was interesting. Um, I, you know, I like it when you ask people, you know, for specific ideas. Somebody said turn the former Kmart into a roller rink. You know, I don't think I would have come up with that. Though. But uh, that's, um, and then obviously, um, I mean, it was one thing that was interesting here. You know, a lot of people said, you know, there's a retail desert. We have to grow the retail and get another big box in. Um, but then at the same time, I think there was a strong sentiment, you know, we need to really make sure we take care of our small independent businesses too. And, um, and emphasis and even and maybe look at you know is it our business incubator opportunity is there some shared space opportunities where we could help um, small businesses um, be successful next slide uh, parks and trails there's a lot of um, anytime we do this parks and trail trails always almost comes up as like a number one priority in all the communities I work up with in Wisconsin people love trails um, but there was uh, outdoor concert, uh, theater space was identified as a need or an opportunity, I think both for enhancing some facilities at Swan Park and maybe doing something at Washington Park. Uh, so that was brought up um, as was an indoor pool or potential water feature and, um, and, and possibly indoor playground were some of the parks and trails comments that were brought forward. Next slide. Um, we kind of clustered these under people attraction strategies or ideas. Um, you know, there was a lot of people kind of shared some thoughts. You know, we really want to be, no what can we do to sort of put a stamp on Wapaka? Oh, can we be known for something, quality of life, jobs, culture, sustainability, arts, culture, but the idea of just maybe just taking some of those branding initiatives that have been brought forward and really driving those home to kind of create a str an even stronger sense of identity. Attracting families um, with creating more opportunities, um, activities for kids, walkable neighborhoods, um, places for people to interact and, and mingle and be social, um, keeping attracting young professionals. Said I wasn't going to read all those, but I did. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> Fulton Street was kind of the, um, again, um, there was some good discussion there. I think one of the things that number three was mentioned that I hadn't heard yet, which I thought, I think is something. You know, it is an out of the box idea that's, I think, worth considering. Um, you know, is, you know, do you maybe look at creating some type of amenity uh, in one of these, in one or more of these areas that then can help drive a private investment or, or businesses around that amenity? So, you know, is there an opportunity in some of these areas to create a little pocket park or a sledding hill or some type of activity center that then might attract um, some apartments or might attract some? private businesses. Um, I think the individual brought up this comment, suggested maybe pushing retail toward the front of that Kmart lot and, you know, could you do something on the backside or up the hill, um, again, that might draw people in to, to create a, a neighborhood amenity but also support new business. So I thought that was, that was a good comment. Next. A lot of feedback and discussion on housing, um, a lot of interest in the downtown housing, multifamily housing, some shared housing options. Um, people brought up the need to kind of update the zoning code uh, relative to housing, uh, housing affordability. Uh, somebody had a comment about maybe a concern regarding 
potential shortage of senior housing or or um, or a nursing home housing. Um, we talked a little. Some folks mentioned, you know, is there an opportunity to do a first time home buyer incentive program like they've done in some other communities, and then look at live work opportunities. Next slide. Arts and culture, always a, a popular topic. Uh, the Arts Center was brought up. A cooperative workspace was kind of brought up. Again, maybe that's that business incubator concept that could support maybe artists as well as other entrepreneurs. Intergenerational strategies, getting youth involved, um, continuing these programs that the library has done to, to help promote social capital or uh, social um, cohesion in the community. Next slide. And then sustainability and resilience was kind of a bucket we identified. A lot of people, several people mentioned the desire, the interest in, in developing more renewable energy within the community and also kind of branding as, as a kind of a innovative, sustainable place could help in terms of talent attraction uh, for, for to bring people in. Maintaining downtown businesses I thought was a good one under resiliency, sometimes um, we forget about just taking care of what we already have, and you do have a pretty good mix of businesses down here. Reducing plastics, um, embracing, again, sustainability as part of that community identity or resilience. Um, and then a couple people mentioned, you know, becoming a national model for overcoming challenges and what, and kind of, you know, what packet, which I, I think is a cool, uh, kind of a cool goal or idea of trying to, you know, um, do something ambitious like that. Next slide. Uh, this was kind of a little bit of a hodgepodge under public safety infrastructure. Somebody mentioned heated sidewalks. Again, a lot of a lot, several comments on expanded bike lanes, um, more transit options. Um, somebody mentioned better broadband internet. Uh, there was a comment on reducing crime. I think just one comment on crime. Next slide. Got to be about it. Okay, and then we did a second exercise where we we placed out some maps. You can go to the next slide. And this is just a picture of uh, what that looked like. So we had these maps of the city and then we had different small groups sitting around there um, providing uh, comments on specific locations within the city. So the first exercise was kind of big picture. And then this was getting down into the weeds, uh, getting some specific comments on specific locations. And then at the end of that exercise, we did a report out and each of the tables kind of reported out some of their key key themes they came up with, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, third ward neighborhood revitalization was brought up, um, capitalizing on the river corridor and doing more with the, with the back of Main Street over here on the riverfront park was brought up as, a, as an opportunity. Um, uh, there was um, uh, somebody, you know, brought up opportunity to maybe, you know, is there an opportunity to annex some land or take advantage of, I think, is it the 22 interchange out there by the highway? Is it the town of Farmington or something owns some of that land? But a few people brought that up as an economic development opportunity. And then another one that came up was just uh, engaging more folks from the chain in community, finding ways to plug them in as the chain becomes less of, a little less of a seasonal summer destination and more of a year round or more of it's, you know, some folks said the chain's starting to attract more year round residents. How do you engage them, their talents and, and time and, um, you know, efforts into um, the growth of the city. All right. So that's kind of an, a recap. Jeff did his little dog and pony show on the um, zoning ordinance. So we went through that again and learned about uh, why they call it Euclidean zoning. Um, he had like five or six slides here, but um, I'd you go to the next slide. And then uh, finally, on, again, just to kind of put in a little plug for that survey, could you, I don't know if you can click on that link, um, Justin, um, or copy and paste that link into a web <clears throat> website. If you can, I'd give you a quick, a very quick little uh, there it is. buzz through... Uh, Hold on a second. Sure. Well, while he's doing that, um, and you're probably going to tell us anyway, but who, who who's going to receive that survey? Uh, everybody. Um, we would like to. I mean, ideally, every man, woman, and child in the city, <laughs> um, and uh, you know, business owners, property owners. I mean, ideally, we'd get. Um, uh, you know, everybody's got. 
um, resident, business owner, property owner within the serve within the city. Um, we've got some different strategies we'll use to get the word out. We're hoping there might be a little plug in the newspaper. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, we're going to hit. We'll use the um, city's databases and listservs to push this thing out, and um, uh, it'll be open. This is not the final version. We're we're kind of tweaking this, but it'll we'll get it launched tomorrow. I believe by the end of the day is kind of what we're shooting for. We will have it launched by the end of the day tomorrow, and then uh, it'll be open till February first to give people enough opportunity. Um, it's touching on on uh, different kind of areas here, and it's touching on the comp plan as well as a little bit on the strategic plan towards the end. So um, we're, asking, we're asking some of the same sort of comprehensive planning questions, but then what we've got, you'll see some questions that are a little bit more focused on uh, kind of city um, programs and services. So um, we'll ask people kind of what role they're in, their age, um, you can hit the next button. Is this going to be only online, or is there going to are there hard copies? Uh, good question. Um, at this point in time, we were thinking only online. I think, um, but that's a great point. I mean, like what we might do is what we might want to consider doing is for those that don't want to take it online. You know, if they could come in to the library and maybe somebody could kind of walk them through it. Um, is this something that we can uh, toss in our water bills, Aaron, and just ask them to return them too? I mean, yeah, I don't see why not. We could certainly do that. Yeah, sure. And then we'd hit everybody. Yeah. When does that what next water bill go out? Do you remember? Is it middle of the end of uh, well, the first part of January or first part of February? Was it this? We just We're missed the January on. one. We did put a we plug. Put something we put a plug in the last one uh, for people to come to the workshop and to sign uh, up uh, on the web page. Okay. The only challenge, so you know, timeline-wise, it wouldn't be impossible to do. The only challenge is with going to the paper survey is um, one. It's you know, it's paper and printing, and uh, and then somebody's got to enter all that data in. Um, so it gets a little bit more time intensive, but. If we feel like it's important to have a paper option, um, you know, it's certainly possible. We can talk. Yeah, we can definitely have that discussion and see how yeah. that would work. What the logistics yeah. would be. Um, it gets a little a little more complicated. Do you guys feel that that that's kind of important to have a paper option or? Well, I think it's an option. I think it's important. I don't know if you need to send it to everybody that you can discuss, but there are still people who don't use computers. Right. Right. Um, that um, you might want to get some feedback. In fact, one of the things you talked about, or somebody brought up, is they wanted more broadband or internet service. Might be that they live in an area there isn't any right now for them. So. I like that idea. So we'll chat about that tomorrow. But I really, I think that's. I, I I'm glad you brought that up because at the very least, we should have a paper option available here for folks that couldn't couldn't uh, get on it at home. So. And are you, you mentioned that in one of the uh, slides that you had about you know, the area in terms of encompassing uh, and, and, and inviting more people from the townships like the chain to become more involved, is this going to go out just to city dwellers, city residents? That was, yeah, usually for the, for this, yeah, we usually just target the, it, it, it's designed more for residents, business, property owners. Uh, with it being online, it, it technically can be accessed by anybody. We do ask them for their address and so on and so forth. So, um, but but yeah, anyone in the area can take that sure. survey. That'll be online. We also have three different versions of the survey. Um, one of the versions is going to be the one you see online, and that's going to be for the masses. Um, one of the versions is actually designed for a student, um, and a high school student specifically. So we were going to uh, speak. I was going to talk with Mr. Sari um, to see if we could get it in that comment kickoff uh, Wednesday morning type um, time. And then we also have one that's a little more in-depth uh, we have two focus groups that we're going to be having on January 23rd, one with business leaders in the community and one with community partners, such <laughs> as the school district or um, the chamber or Fox Valley Tech, Theta Care, so on and so forth. Um, and then anyone, you know, there's going to be inevitably some people that can't make it that we'd really like to hear from, whether it be a community leader or, or who, but um, we would send that more detailed one to them. Well, I don't have to tell anybody in this room, I don't think, but there are many people who live in the townships 
Dayton, Farmington, town of Wapaka. And if you ask them where they live, they'll all tell you they live in Wapaka. Yeah. Yeah. And they really believe that they live in Wapaka. We certainly they don't say that I live in Farmington. And so, therefore, their interests right. might be interesting to find out in terms of your survey what they think of the community because uh, virtually 10,000 of them live around the city but don't live in the city. Yeah, yeah I, know, I know we had some people from Farmington and outside the city limits at the meeting on Monday night as well. Um, so, yeah, we're, I mean, we, we want input on what Wapaka should look like, um, and everyone has their opinions on what that is, and we'll take all input. Oh, when that first, if you go, I don't know, can you go back to that um, survey, if you still have it up, Justin? Yep. Um, maybe what we'll do, we'll add that under roll, we'll just make sure of an option that for people to click, you know, if they're from one of the surrounding towns or something like that. Um, so we can break those out. Um, I just want to quickly, we don't need to go through all these exactly, but um, with this is, I think, the, um, yeah, you can hit next, just give you a flavor for some of the questions that we're, we're asking. Um, so we're asking people to sort of, you know, chime in on kind of their um, perceptions regarding quality of life, their neighborhood, um, Wapak is a place to retire, to work, um, affordability, general direction. Um, we're gonna ask people kind of, might wanna tweak the language here, but you know, what are what are your, some of your key issues and opportunities facing the city? What do you see as a kind of key challenges facing the city? What is, what are the, some opportunities to overcome those challenges? Um, now this slide we might kind of push towards the end, but this is getting back a little bit more to city um, operations. And this was one that Walter had used in some other communities and Aaron thought this might be a nice opportunity since we're doing this survey to maybe benchmark kind of where we're at, where the city's at relative to some of these um, services. I think there's still way too many there. Um, there's like 25 different categories. But we gotta combine this down to 12 things or something, but. Um, well, be careful what you ask for here. <laughs> be careful what you ask for. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot in, I mean, there's, we've got a lot of detail here. So um, click on one of those buttons as, there just so you can see what it says. So it's basically a two-part question. How important are these things to you? And then what do you feel is, um, how are we doing relative to that? Pretty nice oh, one. Nice there, there. <laughs> what did you want? Oh about? boy, I oh, see. I I see. see. It's it's been been that yeah. <laughs> Results. Um, so if you, um, yeah, so this, you know, gets pretty detailed in here. Um, uh, and um, <laughs> I think we can combine, again, some of these land use zoning regulations things. I mean, storm drainage, um, maybe just streets. Uh, for most people, you know, I don't know if they break it out to that level of detail, but. Um, well, Justin, a lot of these are in the Public Works Department. Before we go live tomorrow, we haven't had a conversation with Justin yet, so yeah. maybe we just carve out 15 minutes. Got sure. It? You don't have anything, anything going on tomorrow, do you? Nothing going well, on. So, yeah, so we'd like to get a little bit of feedback and just make sure. Uh, just Why do you treat uh, your boss like that? We've got some questions on housing, housing affordability, housing product. You know, I think I'd like to reword that question number 11 right. a little bit, but it kind of gets at, you know, what are some different kind of housing products you think are needed. Um, but you can skip to the next. Uh, we asked specifically about Kmart and Shopko leaving, asked people to kind of share some of their thoughts or ideas on types of land uses that we you know, should consider out there. Um, asked a question about biking and walking. All right, next slide. I think we want to get some input from Jess on this 14, still a little awkward. Um, want to get a little some feedback, I think, on neighborhoods from people to kind of give us um, their impression of their neighborhood. Andrew, I know that when this is all said and done, you're going to tabulate all the information, but what, what's your intent then once that is tabulated? To, what are you planning to do with that information? Yeah, well, most of this, I think part of this, um, some of those questions are really geared more operationally, maybe an opportunity to just do a snapshot now, see how the city's rating according, you know, and go back five years from now or three years from now and maybe ask those same sets of questions. 
So that's kind of, that would be some of those questions, but those other comprehensive planning questions are, um, the thought would be to combine those responses and those um, key issues that are identified through there with the results from the visioning workshop and the results from the focus groups that we're gonna do, and then use all that information as we move forward and work through the comp plan with you guys to help develop um, we would use those to develop like draft goals and objectives for the comp plan. Um, and some of those are strategy ideas, right? So, I mean, there's kind of some goals. We'll use some of that information to help s develop some draft goals around these different, um, say, housing, transportation, the different chapters. And some of those little strategy ideas, you know, we'll, be, we'll have in a survey. And as we're, you know, developing strategies around each of these topical areas, we may be able to go back and mine some of this feedback for strategies as well. But really, in my mind, it's to kind of frame the, the goals and objectives for each of the chapters. So I kind of want to know what, you know, the priorities are and regarding uh, transportation, land use, economic development, some of these corridor issues. Um, so I think, I think that's about it, Justin. There may be one or two more. I think, is there 20 questions right now? Um, again, this was one that uh, that's why I say it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. Th these are some questions that Walter had um, and um, that really aren't comp plan related. It's more about customer service and your perception of the city. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to mention kind of to Pat's question too. Um, we're going through a lot of plans right now. We're asking for public input to put on a, um, quite a few things. And we're, one of the things we're trying to do with some of these tools is just make it as efficient as possible instead of going back to people twice or with three different tools. So we have combined some comp plan concepts and questions with some strategic plan concepts and questions. And we'll use a lot of this for the comp plan results, but we'll also use some of it and match it with what we have currently for a strategic plan. When is our comp plan supposedly to be finished? By the end of the year. Yeah. By the end of 2020. Yeah. I mean, get finished and adopted, and yeah, but that was the that's the timeline we're under right now. Zoning is expected to wrap up sooner than that. Is that a mandated state mandated uh, 2020 plan that we have to have in place? Uh, no, I mean, technically, you're supposed to update these things every 10 years, and and you did it in 2007, so you you know kind of technically should have been updated by 2017, but. Um, Nobody's looking over our shoulder too closely. Well, it is mandated for the zoning rewrite. I mean, it has to match if we want to make changes. Well, yeah, I mean, you're supposed the law says that if you're going to do zoning, you, you have to have a comprehensive plan, and that comprehensive plan needs to be updated every 10 years. So, but I, I think we're in a good position to get it done in this, you know, in, in 12 months. I got a question about the questionnaire. It looks like it's going to take a long time to finish because um, I think I saw 160 questions and a lot of them look like you got to really think on a lot of them. My, my question is, if somebody starts it, are they going to be able to save it and come back to it if they want to have time to think about it? They can, yeah. They they have, um, and that's described in the uh, first page of this of the introduction to the survey. When you okay. land on there, so you they don't can, have to. They don't have to do it all at once. They don't have to do it all in one sitting. Although I still think there's way too many questions there. I would. I mean, I just can't. I don't think people are going to sit down for 20 minutes. I mean, you're going to self-select for the type of people that are, you know, don't have a lot of to do. And uh, so, Mike, I think we need to really. Tear it down because that's a. I think it's too long. Yeah, it looks a little like taking the SAT to me. It, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. I appreciate that's good feedback. If you guys have any other, um, you know, <laughs> that, that's that's great feedback. That was kind of my gut feeling as well. I think that's all I got. Okay, thanks, Andrew. <clears throat> so that's going to be live this weekend yeah that was our goal to get this thing tomorrow after tomorrow afternoon it's supposed to be done by the live by the end of tomorrow so we wanted to take it to your guys to, to this meeting first for some comments 
such as Mr. Olson just gave and Mr. Fair has given a few. So we'll take that input. And if you have any, you know, we've got if if there's other topics or you know keen things, you know that you think we're missing, feel free to pass those on to us. Um, try to leave this thing fairly broad in general. Um, but if there's some specific questions or things think we might have missed or might be helpful to, to address. I get very frustrated pulling these out if there's not a not applicable category also. Okay. Good, good, good. So just to finish up on the meeting on Monday and and this discussion that we're having now, at the meeting on Monday we talked about the next meeting was going to be uh, March 9th and actually we've now changed that we have to March 16th Monday March 16th so for those of you that were planning on attending or heard 9th it is the 16th now. and that might be a great one for you guys to attend if you could make it that'll just be our deep dive just on the zoning um, so if you could some of the plan commissioners could make it that would be great um, and that'll just be zoning and we'll be hopefully getting into the weeds a little bit. Andrew, we collected emails in that sign in sheet on Monday, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, yep. good. So yeah, and the page they also um, Josh set up a page under their new website, Econo Development Community Zoning Updates, and he's got a web form on there. So for people that want to um, sign up and get updates, and uh, we've already received um, several dozen signups through there so um, that's a great tool for people to just sign up and then every time we do something we'll just add to that um, distribution list to get the word out perfect oh. okay so um, all right thank you Andrew uh, next then is just a discussion or or the list of our permits that we've issued uh, and then also our code enforcement anything in there that you want to talk about or so I can just give a quick update on kind of those three sections um, th really the the permits and the code violations were as standard as it gets um, for a monthly report um, code violations were mostly snow removal and a couple vehicles and then um, permits the only thing I really want to touch on in there that's um, probably something of interest is that yoga hive studio uh, in the Fulton suites I think it's B um, that's going to open. It's going to have a grand opening on uh, the 22nd of January. Um, just a couple other development updates, um, and this one's a not a development update, but um, Pizza Hut uh, is closed. Um, it's part of kind of a national uh, repurposing of their stores. I think they're going smaller and trying to get into more delivery and so on and so forth. I did stop by last night, talked to some of their management, and they were closed as of last night. Um, so I do plan to reach out to that building owner and see um, kind of what the plans are for that building, and, and I can give you updates on that as it comes. But you don't, you, it, 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 it isn't a permanent close? It's a permanent closure for Pizza Hut in Wapaka. Oh, it is? It is, okay. yep. Um, <clears throat> occupancy has been granted in building four of the apartments out in the Eastgate uh, subdivision. Uh, that was the one uh, damaged by storm, <clears throat> uh, and that is the last one to gain occupancy. Uh, zone one of the foundry project is uh, also has been granted occupancy. I believe that's one of six zones in that large building. Uh, the Jeep Stibbs building um, is set for, but uh, we have an, there's an offer uh, for an antique type uh, business to go into there uh, that they specialize in antique furniture. Um, we did have an amended agreement with Mr. Pedrelli and on the St. Mary's property that came forward to council last night. Uh, so we just really backed the timeline up six months um, to allow for the uh, conversation with the arts group to materialize. Um, and then we have, some, we have uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's about it. I think we're good. The only other thing I wanted to mention is the Main Street. We do have a Main Street meeting um, on Monday from 5 to 7 with a presentation happening at 6. And that's right down here in the basement of the library meeting room. So that's public information meeting number 3 and will likely be the last public inf information meeting where the public input will go into some decisions here yet um, as we look to finalize some things. So. 
What was the furniture operation you talked about? Uh, it, it's an antique, um, kind of re antique retail shop going into the Jeep Stibbs, the old Jeep Stibbs building. On Jefferson. On Jefferson okay. Street, yeah. That's definite? Uh, it's set to close on Friday, so it looks purely definite. We talked about that today at the wheelchair shop. <clears throat> uh, one of our volunteers, his son is one of those who made an offer on it, but it would have been a nice facility for our wheelchair shop. Too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we are. I know that the person that is has the offer and is also um, looking at possibly getting on the historic registry. So we have a meeting with Scott Christie on Friday as well. So we'll see what happens with that. Aaron, as long as you brought up kind of um, uh, the building across the street, the Chase Bank building. Yep. Um, there's been some interest in some of the groups kind of looking for art space and have contacted them but haven't received anything back from them. Is it possible that you could give them a call and see what the status is there? Yes. Um, that number has been, uh, the person involved uh, tried several times and nobody responds back, so I thought, well, maybe as a city administrator, yeah. you might get a response. Yeah, well, you'd be surprised. Sometimes <laughs> I do, sometimes I don't. Um, I probably wouldn't. I, uh, I do have a contact, too, that... Um, I know there was some challenges with some other people interested, and I've steered them towards a contact at a point, and I can share that contact okay. as well. That would be great. So, yep. Are you bored? Yeah. And that's all I have, Mayor. Does it look like it? Oh, sorry. I shouldn't be doing that then. <laughs> okay. Anything else for the good of the meeting? Move to adjourn. Motion by Keelan. Second. Second by Olson that we adjourn till our next uh, scheduled uh, city planning. Remember that will be the first Wednesday of February then, which is February 5th. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Against? Motion carried. We're adjourned at 6.18 p.m. Have a great night, everybody. Be safe. Okay.